Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 8, Part 2 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation, focusing on the metaphor of attempting to reap what has not been sown at all, and the role of compensation in forgiveness and repentance. The session was recorded on the 13th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilstel, Queensland, Australia. Why I expect to gain something when I do nothing. <laughs> yeah. So we've already talked so far in the discussion that we definitely accrue compensation when we do nothing from a mm. physical sense, but you wouldn't really call that a gain, would you? So here, we're, here we're, we're talking about the condition that exists in a lot of people when they say, look, my life should be easy. I haven't done that much, but things should be going better for me. And, and I should be able to enjoy what's happening. Um, and I'm not, and it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a very poor attitude, really, um, this uh, whole idea of expecting to get something from doing nothing. It, it is a big problem on the planet for a lot of reasons, and some of the emotional reasons we'll look at a little mm. later. But you can see that, you know, we firstly have many examples probably we could mention just quickly yeah. about, you know, that show us that we have this sort of angry this angry fear, you know, where we're, we're angry about the fact that we're having to do something. And most yeah. of us are very angry with God about how God's created <laughs> this law, law, you know, that yeah. forces us really yes. to, to consider that we have to do something, yes. you know. And, uh, and so we're, we're often enraged in that direction towards God um about having to do things you know yeah well and um and the results I'm, of doing nothing i'm sure many people <laughs> can relate to that idea where you get to a certain point in your life and you don't want to go in either direction um and you'd like to just be able to sit down on your little bag and stay there forever because everything seems scary or or whatever even no matter which way you turn mm. and at that point you usually get angry at god for creating a system yeah, where, because there's where more you're and unhappy more. just sitting yeah. there yeah. and there's more and more things too that come along into your life and you go i don't want these things yeah. why are they happening to me yes. why can't i just sit here and go la, 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 why can't la, la, i just sit la, here and la, ignore yeah. everything and be a hermit why yeah. do i why is it like this and not understanding of course that god designed and that, that when you sit there and try to be a hermit, there's mm. going to be a lot of events that happen to try to trigger you out of that condition. Yeah. And OK, so let's just talk about some examples where people where it's evident that people have this injury. Mm. So let's talk about that first. So yeah. basically, and here we could list hundreds. We could. So yeah, so many. Literally hundreds so of many. thousands, probably. Yeah. <laughs> But in case you think you don't have this injury, listen to the list because you come to see that, oh, goodness me, there is something where I'm not doing anything, but I'm expecting something in yes. return. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's let's work through the list. Maybe if I mention them and you, you can sure. comment. Yeah. So the first one we've listed there is when we're angry at God for not having a relationship with me. I'm angry at you, God, because I'm I'm doing everything and you're not even loving me right now. Yeah. yeah. Not understanding that the reason why God can't have a relationship with us is because we're not willing to love. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to work through the issues as to why we're not willing to love in order to have a relationship with someone who's loving. Yes. And also, <laughs> so, God's the most reliable person in the world. Like, as soon as you really want a relationship with God, you're going to have and it. And it's so, sincere yes. and you want to do it in love, then naturally you'll have it. So, therefore, you know, well, I don't, if God, if I'm not connecting with God right now, I'm not willing, I'm not wanting. There's something in me. To develop that desire. Yeah. And if I'm angry at God, then obviously I'm expecting God to overcome that within me. And this is what we do a lot in relationships generally, yes. isn't it? We, we, sort of, we sort of go, well, no, they've got to do all the work to have the relationship. I'm not going to do any. And you see this a lot in even marriages and that, where, you know, one person doesn't, doesn't open their heart or, you know, or... or just be open about how they think or feel and, mm -hmm. and the other person has to work hard mm -hmm. to know it well god is not going to work hard to know us he already knows us mm. he doesn't work hard to know us he doesn't feed our addictions to know us yeah right 
and and so frequently we want him to and yes. that's why we get angry so yeah. we want him to do all the work and we just sit on our backsides doing nothing yeah. and still have a relationship yes. that's really what the majority of people want yeah. and and we're not going to get it ever yeah. because that's not the way god is yes mm. yes which probably leads us to our next example which mm-hmm. is making demands of others and taking no responsibility for my own whatever it could be my emotions for my physical livelihood for my finances finances for, for my relationship for, for anything i find difficult <laughs> yeah. and, and i don't want to i don't want to put in any effort and expecting others whenever there's as you said this kind of codependent patterns emerge in a partner relationship it's because of this yes. saying well i'm afraid of the cold and dark so you always have to go out and get the firewood for me you know, that's, there it is. I don't want to do, I don't want to be expecting someone else. I'm expecting yeah. to gain the warm fire without me doing anything. I've come home from work. You've been home all day. You've got to cook for me. Mm. There's another example. Yeah. Not taking personal responsibility, not wanting to take action, wanting the other person to that, take action to prove their love for you, mm-hmm. which is really wanting something for nothing yes. in a lot of ways, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, so, or we think we're earning their love, which mm-hmm. is also bartering rather than love yeah. so in other words i do the work during the day so you should do the work at home yeah you know that's a barter that yeah. and that that's not love and that's it's ex- an arrangement yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it might be workable <laughs> or yeah. it might be very unfair you yeah. you know like and you'd have to look at it if it is yeah it, it just but it's still an arrangement it's not love it's not oh they they always make me feel safe that's why I love them. No, that's why you're addicted to them. Yeah. That's not love, to love somebody who makes you feel safe. A person who truly loves you will challenge you, will, will help you move forward, will help you grow, yeah. help you change. They're not going to make you feel safe all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the fact that you've, you love them because they make you feel safe, well, that's just your addiction. That's yeah. you wanting to stay inactive on the issue of fear yes. and wanting somebody else to compensate for it. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, expecting to grow and change without doing any work or feeling anything <laughs> uncomfortable or, yeah. you know, whatever. And here we're talking a lot yeah. about emotional work, right? Yes. So, so uh, if you look at it, if you look at this, this is a very strong desire in most people that, yeah. that they have it like, I shouldn't have to do any emotional work, but a pill should cure my disease, right? Mm-hmm. But the emotion that causes the disease, no, I shouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah. Hopefully the pill will cure the emotion too, is what we're really looking for, or if we even have any connection between the emotion and the disease. Yeah. You know, and this is just another example of, do I want to grow and change? Mm-hmm. Most of the time not. Mm-hmm. Most of the time I am scared or angry about growing and changing. I want what, what, I, what people view as a stable life mm-hmm. is a constant or consistent one, Yeah. right? But that's not what God wants you to have. He wants you to have an ever-changing life. Yeah. Right? Not a it's part of the design feature. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. There's only a few things in your life that will eventually be stable Constant. and consistent. And even those will always change in, in, in degrees. Mm-hmm. So, so, for example, once you meet your soulmate and you're connected to your soulmate, that relationship will remain a consistent part of your life. But only because you're two halves. Yeah. It's got no other, no other reason than that. You're actually two halves of one (laughs) that's why why it's (laughs) going to be like that (laughs) that's why it works but it also will always require growth yes like you'll get happier and happier if you grow you'll you'll remain quite sad and disappointed with the relationship if you don't Mm -hmm. and so you know god's always encouraging growth and whenever we're resistive to growth and change we're basically saying like no i want to have consistency in my life And as soon as we have that, we're basically against all of God's laws. Mm -hmm. None of God's laws help help us remain stable. Yeah. They 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 always want us to grow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Expecting the world to supply all needs and wants. Mm, This is a big problem, and and it seems to be uh, getting a big to be a bigger problem. Yeah. Uh, You see a lot of parents nowadays feeding the addictions of their children so much that the parents' whole life is about the child. the child and yeah. so the children you know they they have this you know they do their art and they do their music and they do their you know sport and they do these after curriculum activities and and a, a lot of parents their entire resources all their spare funds and money and everything goes into yep. having the child's needs, needs they call yep. it but it's actually wants yeah 
and it's actually wants that the parents created <laughs> yes, as well. exactly. Fulfilled. Yes. Right? And, and it was very selfish because yes. what it is is trying to express all of your unhealed emotion in your relationship with your child. Okay. It is also selfish because your children will grow up to be very narcissistic, self-involved okay. people who have no concept of what it means to uh, you know, support a community or the world yeah. and live in a sustainable manner. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we're getting a generations, every new generation of children is becoming more and more self-involved and selfish. Mm. Hence, we have huge industries like Facebook who, who that come onto the scene to feed the narcissism of yeah. the masses. Yes. And and these kind of these kind of software products, which eventually become huge organisations, are just feeding the underlying problem, which yeah. is the desire for people in the world to get something from nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. and it's very very damaging. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so the, these kind of problems, expecting the world to supply everything we want and need without us doing anything, is, is a very, very selfish, self-involved and unloving attitude towards mm. others. Because mm. mm. it's not to say that those particular activities that you mentioned, like doing art or sport or any of those things, necessarily have to engender that attitude Not but the all. way in which these things are being built into children's lifestyles and the way the attitude that the parents have yeah particularly this attitude that the parent will do everything possible and give all of its resources to this one child mm -hmm. why isn't doing the same for 20 other children yes. that, that it's because it's their child yes and this is a, the inequality of it, mm -hmm. that focused on their child and not helping all children. Mm -hmm. And let's look at what's happening to all children, shall we? Mm. If you look around the world and what's happening to all children, we see a great disparity between what happens to children in the Western world and what happens to children in other locations. And why is this? It's because the people in the Western world are so selfish, so selfishly involved in their, in their own children mm -hmm. that they cannot even conceive that what they're doing is unequal for the rest of the world. Mm. And, and this is a very poor, a very bad problem that needs to be sorted. Yeah. And the only way to sort it is for all of us to stop getting, uh, engendering even in our children, the concept that they can do nothing and get, and, and get everything they want. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, this is a good one. Expecting the world to help us avoid all fears and insecurities. Yes, and this is a very common one too, I feel, is that frequently what we want from the world is that a world's going to make me feel safe. Yeah. Right? Well, God's, God's already made a safe universe. Yeah. If we engage love, it would always be safe. Mm. The only reason why it's unsafe is because we've not engaged love yeah. collectively. Yes. And that's why it's become unsafe. Mm -hmm. And here we're going, well, no, no, I'm going to make it more unsafe by projecting all of my fear and insecurity now onto the world. So rather than accepting God's viewpoint, which is that, no, the world that I created, God's saying to you, the world God created is safe. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of believing that or having faith in that, what we do is we go, no, the world's a mess and it's, it's terribly traumatic now living in this world. So now what I'm going to demand of the world, my governments, my financial institutions, my, my religious institutions and everything, I'm going to demand from them they, they all make me feel safe yeah right and that that is a very self-absorbed way to live your life but also what it does it is encourages now a codependence which also now encourages manipulation and control well it enables it doesn't it enables it, it yeah. yeah so now then they question why are governments manipulating you because they can because you yeah. want it really yeah. Yeah. why are financial institutions manipulating because they can because you want it really and why do religions manipulate you oh because they can <laughs> you, <want laughs> you left that whole, <laughs> you that left whole that. wide open because you don't want to feel insecure or unsafe at yeah. any point you, so they just have to threaten you with that and then you yeah. go okay I'll do what you want so yeah, yeah. so <laughs> so you don't want to feel unsafe with god you don't want to feel insecure and unsafe with the world you don't want to feel and secure and unsafe financially, emotionally, physically, medically, and every other aspect of life, yeah. if you examine it, they're all, a lot of it's about not wanting to feel safe and having fears, right? Yeah. And, and we unsafe, don't want yeah. to deal with it. Yes. And yeah. as a result of that, we choose to get them to fix the problem. Yes. Like them, it's always them. My government didn't fix the problem. My religion didn't fix the problem. My financial institution didn't fix the problem. There's always a problem with them. Yes. <laughs> but, but what caused all these problems? Yeah. Our underlying emotional condition individually and collectively. Yeah. The, yeah, demand the demand that I shouldn't have to feel it. And, yeah. and you know, that's you speaking very on a societal and global level, but, uh, you know, even at a dinner party, <laughs> 
when my husband talks about something that makes me uncomfortable and I shoot daggers at him and, you know, don't speak to him and sort of sulk off no for the rest for of the No sex for the month yes. now. It's like, whatever. That demonstrates that I have a demand that he that somebody else be responsible for not exposing my fear or insecurity doesn't it that's right and and you know when we're in a situation where fear or insecurity is triggered and we feel justified to get angry we are expecting something for nothing that's right we are expecting no you supply my sense of safety and security and if you don't i feel you are doing something wrong to me, to me. Not, not that oh, i have a responsibility not that i've got a belief that. that's out of harmony with love yes yeah. yeah, and that I need to fix. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, this one complaining about global effects of what is my personal sin. <laughs> so let's explain this one a little bit because it's also extremely common. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So. So, what kind of examples can we give uh, um, our okay. listeners about this? Let me just this? have a think about it. The the um, <sighs> an example is war. I suppose you could say war is a global effect. Mm -hmm. There is a there is something going on globally mm -hmm. where there is a, a increasing amount of conflicts in the on the yep. earth today, and uh, you know if you look at the statistics, there's more wars occurring right now, more conflicts occurring right now than actually there ever has been in human history. Yeah. Um, so so there's obviously something going on, right? Mm -hmm. What's causing it? My fear causes it. Yeah. Like, a re no, a refusal to feel my fear. To feel my fear, and instead want my government or my religion or my society or my family or whatever or my it is, member of parliament, to or... fight for me. <laughs> yes, to fight for me to feel safe. Yeah, right. In other words, I'm willing to kill people to feel safe. Yeah. I am. Yeah, and most people are willing to kill, kill people to feel safe. Yeah. Now, my feelings about that are, yeah, this is a terrible thing, really, when yeah. you think about it. We're willing to have abortions to feel safe, yes. which is killing children to yeah. feel safe. We're willing to kill and maim and have rapes and mur murders go on every day, which is what war mostly occurs in war. Mm -hmm. All of those things occur. And yeah, and we're willing to we're willing to have little children who are able bodied, have arms and legs ripped off through all sorts of uh, terrible traumatic yeah uh, explosions and bombs and whatever else yeah. we're willing to send people off into um suicide missions we're willing to bomb the uh, location to smithereens mm -hmm. you know i think there was more bombs dropped in vietnam than there was in the entire second world war yeah. statistically and, and we're willing to do that to a country yeah. just for a political ideal mm. we're, we're willing to do a lot of things yeah. to to harm the world and mm. um, internally ourselves yeah and we've got to get rid of that. Yes. Right. So this is blaming the world. Like, oh, look at all the war that's going on in the world. Isn't it terrible? Mm. What's terrible is the condition that causes it, <laughs> which is I... the individual fear inside of the persons yes. involved in the conflicts and also inside of the nations involved in the conflicts mm. as, a, as a community. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And we can see this a lot in the Western world where we have certain um, demands and expectations about what our lifestyle should entail. Mm -hmm. And we are, then we complain about child slavery. We complain about um, environmental effects, people in another country demolishing the environment. Yeah, or, like the Brazilian rainforest. Like yeah. Or the Brazilian government demolishing the Brazilian rainforest. You know? The orangutans <laughs> becoming, you know, extinct. maltreated and extinct when we are eating products that are basically supporting their genocide destruction. their destruction that's right you know and so there's a lot of disconnect between my demand my expectation to get something and the, and global, the global problems effects. that are happening yeah. so when i complain about the global effects of my personal sin i'm saying look no i expect that the world should be fine and i get what i want i want what i want for nothing you know i'm not going to change or do anything differently and everything else should be also okay. But the world is paying for it. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. The world physically, environmentally, uh, and financially, and also 
the pain and suffering of the majority of people in the third world mm -hmm. is paying for yeah. the wealth of the first world, if it's called that, yes. the Western world. Yeah. You know, and, and this is a big, big problem that we've got to start to look at more sincerely and more yeah. and, and, and more, you more know, accurate, like, accurately, more truthfully. We've got to yeah. find the cause yes. rather than just saying, oh, there's a problem over there. No, yeah. there's a problem here. Yes. And in fact, there's higher problems in Western society than there are in any other society, yeah. no matter what you compare. Yeah. Because from God's perspective, it's Western society that spends most of its time raping the, and pillaging the resources of the rest of the mm -hmm. world and thereby harming the mm. people in those places. Yes. So, so, you know, when are we going to do something about that? Yeah. You know, when are we going to change it into being something more sustainable? Yeah. We've got to do something about it. Mm. And uh, and this is why, you know, part of what we're trying to do with God's Way is try to develop re sustainable resources to, to recover environments so that the world can benefit from those recovered environments. And, and so look forth. at our lifestyle practices, our common consumption, and look at well, what are better ways of creating these products and also what... What are things that we deem as necessary that are completely unnecessary? Yes. And how can we reuse and repurpose things? And all, all very sound environmental um, uh, philosophies and yep. practices that are established in other areas of the world and yet are not embraced because there's certain emotions. They're not embraced more globally because there's certain emotions. And that's that are preventing people from this, well, this lot, injury of wanting something for nothing. Exactly. A lot of it is based primarily on the fact that where people in the West don't want to work as hard yes. and also they want to get money for for nothing. Yeah, they want or to, at someone else's at expense. Someone else, it's always yeah. at someone else's yes. expense. Yes. So don't fool yourself that you're getting money for nothing. You're yeah. not getting money for nothing. You're getting money at somebody else's yeah. expense yeah. most of the time unless you're working yeah. towards some kind of common yeah. goal. And you know, and this is where investment, you know, like the world's financial institutions are all about investments and, mm -hmm. you know, getting a return, a, a interest on your, on your money and all this kind of stuff and growth and all this stuff. Yeah. That all comes at expense yes. of somebody. Yeah. And, and we don't need that for, yeah. for humanity in the long run to survive. No. But, but you do need it if you're going to feed all your addictions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and this is where we're trying to do something mm. very unique with God's way, and that is to look at um, principles and practices in harmony with God's laws, not just from a physical perspective, but also to help people identify and address the underlying emotional causes that cause them to want to sustain these kinds of injuries within mm. themselves and yep. to treat systems and communities in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you can see, you know, this whole expect, uh, this whole, uh, the subject matter was, yeah, let's go uh, we, 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 haven't we, even, we haven't even finished discussing <laughs> no. this yet, have we? So, we're just so why talking do we about, expect this? Exactly. We're question. talking about examples of how it does exist. So all In these case anyone listening thought yeah, they were exempt. <laughs> exactly. It's not, no, there's barely anybody on the planet that's no. exempt. Yeah. from from this problem yes and and the real question becomes well why do i expect to gain something from nothing yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what what inside of me where's the inception point where i think it's okay to shoot daggers at you for for not making me feel safe and secure in a social situation what what how did that how did that get established in me basically yeah. we want to know all yeah. right yeah so these are big emotional injuries, obviously, because it's such a big problem and that people are resistive to. Well, they're very severe emotional yeah. injuries. Obviously, there's a lot of compensation on earth collectively yes. and individually that's occurring yep. to correct this behaviour. Yep. And yet very few people are actually even listening to the compensation or being corrected by it yes. at this stage. Yes. Mm. And they're blaming other things for the pain and problems rather than seeing it as compensation. Yes. Okay. So let's just look very quickly at three, it's almost three groups or classes of injuries because there's like a million different ways that this might play out, play out in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. But there's three sort of major things we wanted to raise if yep. I read them out yep. and then you can talk about them. Yeah. So why I, do I expect to gain something when I do nothing? Basically, there's three emotional injuries that usually result, or three types of injuries that usually result from one, when our parents did nothing for us and we haven't forgiven them. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we now want the world or other people around us to do everything our parents didn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 
an angry protest against a parental lack of love mm. and a parental lack of action that is project projected damagingly onto the world. Yeah. Ironically, the parent obviously had the injury of not wanting to act. Yes. Not wanting to love. Yes. And as a result, they had children still. Yeah even though they had the injury, yep. and now the children feel the effects of a parent not wanting to love or not wanting to act. And and once the child feels that, frequently what the child will do is get very, very angry now with yeah. the parent. Yep. But of course they can't project it to the parent. They don't desire to project it to the parent because they still generally want the relationship with the parent. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they project it on the rest of the world. Mm. And, and basically blame the rest of the world, God or anything else possible yeah. for their parents' lack of love and action. Yes. And, and unfortunately, this angry justification causes them to do all sorts of things and demand mm. all sorts of things from their environment. Yes. And, and it's very, very damaging. It's kind of like the classic chip on chip on your shoulder, isn't it? Like, oh, nobody did anything for me, so, so I'm um, not doing anything. You should all just, you know, do stuff for me. <laughs> yeah, now. yeah, because I'm 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 hurt, I'm angry, and I don't want to get over it. Yeah. yeah, and you've all now got to prove to me that you love me by doing yeah. something for me. Yeah. Because if yeah. you don't do anything for me, you don't care about me. Type yes. of attitude, you know. Yeah. And, it's a very, very damaging attitude. It ruins lives very, very rapidly. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, a large majority of the population have the problem. Yeah. And that's why we have so severe problems collectively. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number two. Parents who did everything for us, <laughs> teaching us to expect that everyone also should do everything for us. Mm. We've not in this case, we haven't repented for our own unloving demands and expectations that were created in childhood, but which we now have upon others. Mm. So instead of repenting, what we're doing is choosing to demand that everyone around us continues the same behavior that our parents had with us. Yes. So in our previous example, we were choosing to not forgive our parents. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, to go through the emotions of not being loved and not being cared for and not being wanted and, and yeah. those kind of things. Not being to, attended to. In and, order yeah. to get to the state where we're self-responsible. Mm -hmm. right? In this example, our parents did everything for us. They taught us that we should demand everything all the time from anybody around us and that they, sh they should always give it to us no matter what we want. Yeah. And in this case, we have de developed a very poor personal attitude. Yes. Like, and, and we're not repentant for it. Yes. We're not sorry for it. We, we think that we can continue it for the rest of our lives and keep demanding and demanding and demanding others. And we're not sorry at all yeah. for the effects it has on yeah. everyone around us. Yes. Yes. All right. So we've got those two now up to three. So those two are very important, they aren't are. they? they? They are. And they're sort of flip sides of the same coin. Yeah. One, and, and you could say the second one is not the parents are not loving. No, no, they no just, parents are loving. No, none of these scenarios. parents are loving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the second kind of parent is often considered to be loving. Yes. So, so this is where the problems arise in much of the Western world now. There's this image of the ideal parent, which is do everything mm. for your child, not understanding that you're actually destroying your child's character yeah. while you do everything for them. Yeah. So the irony is, isn't it, in, in case number one, the parents were completely inattentive to the child and did nothing for them. Yes. In case number two, the parents did so much for the child that the child now sees all of that action as love yes um and that they they're entitled to it and so the irony is in both cases for the for the child to release this injury of expecting something for nothing they're going to have to work through the emotion of not being loved because in one case they weren't loved or attended to and they have to release that in the other case they have to deal with the they have to stop demanding this of other people and start to, and start feel, to see that's not loving that, to demand they have it. to they're initially going to feel nobody loves me because nobody's doing what i want and i think that's love yeah. so they have to go kind of realign their understanding of what love is and in that process they're going to have some times where they feel unloved aren't they they are yes the yeah. second group of people are going to probably feel unloved all the time until it's corrected <laughs> yes. the first group of people um often when somebody loves them because of this underlying resentment they don't receive the love yeah. they always miss trust 
yeah. don't receive the love. Yeah. And as a result of that, they can never really let themselves be loved. Yeah. And they always continue their demands. Yeah. And so both groups of people have got problems with love yes. and they need to resolve them if yeah. they're ever going to resolve this global problem. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the third group of injuries. Mm -hmm. And that's parents who taught us by their actions that we are actually superior to others and therefore should be able to expect that everyone around us who are inferior through this teaching should serve us. Yes. So here we see the setup of a concept of inferiority versus superiority. Yeah. And obviously, if I believe I'm superior to another person, then I believe I should be able to take from them mm -hmm. and they should give to me willingly yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as a pleasure for the, on their part. Yes, even. as a, like a, <laughs> so, your honour to be able to yes, serve your me. Your honour to serve me <laughs> yeah. is the way we feel in <laughs> that state. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so we see that a lot nowadays where people sort of have this idea that it's my, it's your honour to serve me. It's yeah. your honour to you know, f if to give me the things that I need at your own expense. That should be honour for you. you well, know? And we do see this a lot as well between genders. So sometimes a certain parent has set this up in, the, say, a mother set it up in, in their, their son. son. And then the son has this attitude to women, which sadly a lot of women do respond to because of certain injuries they have, which, which says... I just have to exist and you should serve me because that's how great I am. I'm so great and I'm I wonderful. I don't have to give I'm anything. The, I'm the king of all men, <laughs> yeah. you know, of course you should Mummy serve me. Mummy taught me. <laughs> and so, you know, I don't have to expose anything or give anything or put in any physical or emotional effort and you should do everything. That's yeah. right. And you see both, uh, you know, fathers have done that with their daughters, their daughters frequently. Well. Yep. And unfortunately, if, a par if both parents have done it with a child, it's, it's extreme. Yes. But usually it is intergender related. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the opposite gender parent has yeah. done that with the child. Yeah. And depending on uh, oftentimes the, the, the lack of relationship the ch parents have with each other, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But uh, under, un underlying or, uh, un you know, the underpinning all that, obviously, mm -hmm. is this underlying concept that, that we aren't equal. Yes. And that, that, that there are some people who are superior and yeah. there are other people who are inferior. Yeah. And this underlying concept is very, very damaging to your children mm. and very damaging to society. Because yeah. if your children grow up believing it, which they will do if you bring them up to do so, mm -hmm. they end up projecting all that on society. Yeah. And they, so they end up feeling superior yeah. uh, to others in society, which then obviously they take actions yep. to support, yep. which then destroys society. Yeah. And uh, without addressing this particular problem, we're going to continue having world-based major issues mm -hmm. uh, without without any resolution. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. All right, so that is in answer how we could have this problem of expecting to get something for nothing. Mm. Obviously, everything we've said displays a huge lack of love, a huge lack of personal responsibility. And so the compensation involved is going to be trying to correct those That's right. problems. So, so we can't really consider them to be a lack of action we are intensely acting, yeah. but, but emotionally, our belief system by our belief systems and our emotions and our thoughts yeah. are what's doing the creating here. Yes, and we're and expecting and demanding others act. Yes, in place of us in having place to of us having put to in act. effort. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and and this is a severe problem on the planet, and also a major contributor to wars and and turmoil mm. on the planet. Mm. So most of the trauma on the planet. Are caused by those three main areas. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. Very important, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Why I do nothing, believing everything that I could do will have a negative result. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, what if I choose inaction because I believe that anything I do is going to lead to a negative outcome? And yeah, well, this, this is related, you know, I, you know, I can relate to that feeling of like, I'm just not doing anything because anything I do, it all just turns out bad. <laughs> yes. And again, you can feel you know, <laughs> the, the anger. <laughs> there is an anger in it, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and you can see again, um, there, there's a lot of obviously going to be a lot, a vast number of emotional reasons why mm -hmm. we do this. And, and we're not going to obviously have the time to discuss all of the emotional reasons. No. But, but you can see by the whole attitude mm -hmm. that you feel 
which is a very sort of a stubborn, resistive feeling that mm -hmm. develops within a person. It's, it's a resistance, isn't it? It's a very yeah. strong. And, and you can almost imagine the person when they say, okay, yeah. you, know, mm, mm, you know, like the whole body's demeanor and, and the, yeah. you know, what's, go what's going on for them in terms of their expression physically. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what do they call that kind of expression? Body language. Body language, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, is all demonstrating the rage that exists within about mm -hmm. something here, mm -hmm. you know. So, so a lot of this resistance is going to be um, really about either anger or fear, yes. obviously, you yes. know. So the real question we've got to ask is what, what are we angry about, you yeah. know, so all what, right. or so afraid of. Afraid of. Let's have a look at the list that we've prepared. Um, so the first thing we've listed there is that I'm not able to imagine or think or feel about what I would do if I actually did love. So can you explain that one a little bit to us? Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking at any situation, I'm not considering what love would do. Mm. I'm basically going, I'm going, going, oh, instead of going, what would love do? I'm going, I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that and I don't want to do this and I don't want to do that, so I'm not going to do anything. Yeah. Instead of going, hang on a sec. If I loved, mm -hmm. what would I do and mm -hmm. then do that? Mm -hmm. so, so I don't want to feel about what love would do. So it's not that I'm not able because I have a reasoning mind, don't I? No, but we're not able to think or feel. We are not able in the sense of in that moment. Yep. We're, we're, we're in such a dark condition mm -hmm. that we're not able in that moment to actually think or feel what would love do here. Yep. So instead I say... Everything's going to be bad. I'm not going to do anything. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Second, I believe I'm unable to have courage to conquer fear. Yeah. So this is more of a belief, isn't it, than mm -hmm. the previous example, which is a condition that says yeah. I'm unable. Yeah. This is now just a belief. Uh, yeah. uh, it's emotional, obviously. Yes. But it's a belief that says I'm not able to have courage or, or conquer my fear in this situation because I might get hurt or abused or attacked or belittled or condescended yeah. to or even, you know, physically violently harmed or raped or abused or and, and we have a long list of all the things we might that might happen yes and and as a result of all those things that might happen we decide oh, i'm not going to get ahead and do the loving thing so and is this also impacting us in a way that where we can't imagine a good result so maybe now i can imagine look i can see the loving thing would be to tell the truth to that person because we're in an interaction and i can see that um, I'm not being honest, and if I was loving, I'd just be honest. Uh, but but <laughs> What's it, that's what? not going to turn out very good. And so, you well, know, you know, again, w w when it comes to the not turning out very good yeah. discussion, which is which is really what we're talking about here, is because I'm choosing not to act because I believe everything's not going to turn out very good. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a lot of uh, like insidious reasons for it's not going to turn out very good idea or concept. <laughs> And many of those insidious reasons are all just a justification to, for you to not do something that's good. Well, and, and <laughs> isn't it about this issue of feeling that I'm not able to conquer fear or I'm not able to go through a difficult emotion? Or Yeah, well, it, it does boil down to that sometimes. Yeah. But, but it's also about, like, I just don't, I don't want to do it and, and I don't want to admit I don't want to. Uh -huh. So now I'm going to come up with a good reason for why I shouldn't do it. Sure. I, I don't want to have faith in God's system. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do what's right. So what I'm going to do is just believe because it's easier yeah. and because it requires no action. Yeah. Right. It, it's easier for me just to believe that the outcome is going to be bad. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times we don't necessarily believe the outcome is bad. We want to believe the outcome will be bad. Here's an excuse. There's a difference between those two states. Mm. One is ha actually sincerely believing the outcome will be bad, which, yeah. is a, which is a different state, which is also a problem, by the way. Yes. But the other is wanting to believe the outcome will be bad so that you don't have to do it. Yes. Which is actually more a desire to want the outcome to be bad. Yeah. And, 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 and therefore not engage it, you know. Yeah. Is there also an element of it in terms of like... Um, You've often used the example in the past of the husband who's cheated on his wife and he says, well, I'm not going to tell her because then she might, you know, reject me and, and then where's the good outcome there instead of seeing, no, there's a good outcome so what for he, everyone involved. Yeah, but what does he tell himself? It's all going to turn out bad. I'm not no, no, do he it. tells himself, I'm not going to tell her because that will hurt her. 
Yes, so that's the excuse that he uses. Exactly. Yes. Instead of saying, when I slept with that other woman, I hurt my wife. That's yes. already something I've already done. I've yes. already hurt our relationship. Yes. She yes. just doesn't know about it yet, perhaps. And it'd be unlikely if she was connected to him that she didn't know. But, yeah. you know, perhaps yeah. perhaps she's not connected to him. But, yeah. but he still has the requirement to tell her, really, yes. under with God's laws. Yeah. And and all he's doing, really, is initially, is he's saying, oh, if I, I might hurt her, he's really saying that you know he's gonna have something bad happen to him and he's just using the i might hurt her excuse <laughs> right to not tell her the truth right yeah. but then um, the reality is he might say the truth and she leaves him mm -hmm. well that might be true but that is the direct consequence of him cheating in the first place mm. so he doesn't doesn't want to take the full corrective action yes he doesn't want to the consequence yeah he doesn't want to accept the consequence yep that is a natural consequence of him being unfaithful. The compensation almost. Yeah. Yeah. It is a part of the compensation. Yeah. Well, it's a decision she's making, isn't it? Either yes. way, she's allowed to make it. Yeah. He's already experiencing the compensation. He's already done the damage to their relationship. She now has to decide whether she wants to try to repair that damage in the relationship or leave him. Mm -hmm. And she has the right to make that decision of choice. And it's a loving on either part. Mm -hmm. it, to leave him or to stay would be loving yep. in, in either case, right? So, so, but he, what's it, why is he saying this? Because he's basically just being selfish. He doesn't want the bad thing, the, the natural consequence of his action to ever come to life. So basically you're saying here, one of the reasons that I might choose in action um, and say there's only ever going to be a bad result is that um, I don't want to face the consequences. I want to make excuses basically yeah. for my own actions. Yeah. So I'm still not clear on this fear one, okay? So why would I choose in action? Because I believe anything I do will lead to a negative outcome. Um, I believe I'm unable to feel fear. How, how does that work? Well, let, let's say in our childhood, um, every time we spoke the truth, our mother hit us. Yes, and that's right. we've got fear about that now. So now we've got a, a direct link between violence yep. and telling the truth yeah. in, in built in us as a belief. Yes. Right. Now, it's not true from God's perspective. That was yeah. just the unloving behavior of your mother. Yes. And often we don't think about the unloving behavior of our mother. We just think that's a natural thing that most people would do when you tell yep. the truth now yep. because of the unloving behavior. of our And mother. so then we think when we're in that situation where we go say, I'm not really telling the truth here, you know, uh, instead of thinking, you think well, you're it's saving just a yourself from physical violence. Yes. Instead of just saying, I, I'm afraid of that. Logically, this lady in the shop isn't going to hit me. Um, so, but I'm, even if she does, even if she does, I'll just feel the fear that I have about that and experience that, and then I'll move on with my life. So that's what we mean here, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Even if there is violence that comes as a result of you telling the truth, telling the truth is still the right thing to do. Yes. So. Yes. Yes, and that's one of the things that we've listed here is that I'm not willing to take loving action and I'm using fear of consequences to justify my own unloving decisions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes the fear of consequence might be just a natural consequence of my own unloving choices. Yeah. And sometimes the fear of consequence might be the, by, might be the fear of other people's unloving choices. Yes. So in other words, I tell the truth, but they might hit me. Yes. Or I tell the truth and they might leave me. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, that, that is true. They yeah. might. Yeah. But you're just afraid of it. That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and what is right in the end? Yeah. Isn't telling the truth right? Yeah. Isn't every time that you've ever t had the lies told to you, haven't you always, once you found out, been disappointed? Haven't you always felt hurt when somebody's lied to you? So why do you think they're not going to feel hurt when they find out that you've lied to them? Interestingly, too, God's laws all are going to expose lies. Mm. So sooner or later, people are going to find out you lied, whether it's now or after they pass. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to find out. Sooner or later, you're going to destroy the relationship with this lie. So you're mm -hmm. better off getting it over and done with right now yeah. and finding out what the consequences are right now rather than putting it off for 50 years. You par both pass and both of you find out you've cheated on each other and you're very disappointed with each other yeah. and decide to move away from each other then. You know, yeah. what, what's what the best? What a waste of 50 years. Yeah. You might as well have gotten it over and done with when you had the opportunity from the first. Yeah. So... You know, I see a lot of people just deciding to make, you know, these kind of decisions because they don't really think about the long term consequences of their behavior or action and they don't really care mm. because they want what they want. Yeah. 
They yes. don't really care what other people want or need. And maybe that's something we can talk about in our next point. So I'm the reason I might say, look, anything I'm going to do is going to lead to a negative result is that I'm actually angry <laughs> and I don't want to take loving action and I'm using excuses to justify my inaction. And one of my excuses is, oh, it'll all turn out badly. Yeah. yeah. And I would put to a person who's like cheated on their partner that they're probably already angry with their partner and that's why they've gone ahead and cheated on them. Mm, you mm. know what I mean? There's already something wrong in the relationship and enough for them to think just to justify going off and having a relationship with somebody else. So, mm. so you which know, is really just like trying to fix a problem by creating an even worse problem. It's never going to work. Well, I don't know it? if it's even trying to fix the problem, yeah. to be frank. Um, trying to it's just trying to avoid our someone. personal emotion. Yeah about somebody not caring for us sexually or something yeah. like that you know yeah. Yeah. which needs to be addressed yeah. in the relationship certainly yeah. and that might eventually mean you leave that person and go off and have a relationship with someone else it might mean that but yeah. it'd be far better off to have uh, uh, that all open and above board than it would be to have it undercover because you're afraid of other things mm -hmm. because you're afraid of not getting other things you want yeah which is just selfishness really yes. at the end of the day so yeah. yeah a lot of this is driven by anger obviously yeah. a lot yeah. of the desire to do nothing or the desire to say nothing or the desire to not do the loving thing yeah is all about anger so you and know when we're here we're talking sorry go ahead. so when we're saying I don't want to do it because it's going to be a bad result. Yeah. Really what we're saying is I don't want to do it because it's going to be a bad result for me. Yes, it's a selfish thing. It's selfish. Yeah. And, and, and on top of that, really what we're saying is my definition of a bad result is when other people don't meet my addictions. Yeah. That's really what we're saying as well. Yeah. So, so we could rephrase the statement. I do nothing believing that it's going to be a bad result for me and I'm selfish and narcissistic and self-involved and, and, and full of addiction. And so yeah. I want everybody to do what I want. Yeah. And that's why I'm not going to do anything. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, these last two. So here again, we're talking, and this reminds me of a number of young people that we know personally who who don't take much action in their life and have a very negative idea about where everything I try goes wrong. There's no point, you know. And for some of them, these are the reasons. They're not humble to making mistakes mm -hmm. and they're not humble to being corrected or criticised or having any kind of feedback that is either trying to correct them or is just negative, yeah. um, you know, is just yeah. critical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he, like I said, who cares whether it's critical? If you do well, the they, right thing. They do. They <laughs> obviously do. <laughs> yeah. And this yeah. is why, why do they care? Yeah. They don't want to work reason. through their emotional reason why they care. Yeah. Because once you work through the emotional reason why you care, you don't care anymore exactly. about whether someone's critical for no good yeah. purpose. Yeah. And when somebody is giving you criticism that's uh, based around love and, and concern, then you listen to it and you're not. You don't get up in arms and all angry and annoyed and everything about it. You love it. Yeah. You know, oh, what a wonderful friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's exactly. how you feel. Yeah. So, so, so why would you think any of those two things are problematic? It's mm -hmm. only because of underlying emotional issues, as we said from our previous point, yeah. that come obviously from our childhood experiences or that we purposefully developed during our older age yep. that come from the you know experiences we're avoiding in our childhood experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've got to address it. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list either. So no like, way. in fact, there's nowhere near even yeah. a, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a, a few of the reasons yeah. why, but, but each of these damaging emotional beliefs result from unloving events in our life. Yeah. Now, whether we created them or somebody else created them, mm -hmm. that's what we've got to work out. Yeah. Right. But they do come from events in our lives that we have not released. And from what you're saying, often the reason we do this, I'm not trying anything because nothing works out good anyway. It's a cover for some very specific things mm. and it's you've established it's based in anger or a justification of avoidance of some kind of feeling of risk or a fear that we're not willing to feel, but it's quite specific um, and this is just like a big blanket we put over it, like there's no point trying because everything's gone bad yes. and it's going to keep going bad. Yeah, It's just yeah. a big kind of get out of jail or go to jail really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. we must point out that god's laws are very much engaged in trying to correct this kind of attitude yes and and so a person who has these attitudes 
is going to find life in the long run quite difficult. Mm -hmm. and, and what we're seeing globally is collectively, globally, we're now finding life quite difficult. Yes. Because of the same problems. Yes. Right. The individual yes. problems now being reflected on a collective or global scale. Yeah. And, and so we need to see that a lot of these global events that are occurring today that people are afraid of and talking about mm. all the time, they're in the news all the time, these kind of events are the natural result of our un inability to be honest about addressing the actual causes of these problems. Yes, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because I remember saying to you a few years ago that I just felt like cynicism was somehow in fashion, you know, and some of these kind of what are seen to be hip kind of for young people or news media outlets seem to be just like cloaked or just dripping in this cynicism of this feeling of like, well, there's no point, there's no solution to anything, everything leads to, there's always a problem with something, you know, it's never anything perfect, it's all bad, bad, bad. Yeah. And that's really what you're saying. This is, that it's being reflected globally, mm -hmm. um, this feeling, isn't it? Yeah. And what we're not dealing with as individuals. And there's a whole now of philosophy, if you like, religious almost fervour about this philosophy of inaction. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, where nobody can do anything to fix the problem, the yeah. problem's too big. No. We create the problem mm -hmm. through our emotional condition. Yeah. We are able to fix it. And not only that, God expects us to fix it. Yes. It is our creation. Yeah. And God expects us to get rid of all creations that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. And he's not yeah. going to do that for us. Yeah. <laughs> Why I believe better results come from doing nothing. <laughs> So this right. is still, we're still on the subject of compensation, obviously. We are. And, and this is very sim related to our previous question, isn't it? Or yes, similar. it is. Because yeah. the previous question was all about why I believe doing anything will have a bad result. Yes. And this is saying, I will get better results if I do nothing. Yes. So, so, it's, so it's, it's, there's it's a slight almost, change in, yeah, the, in its yeah. flavour, if you like. Yes. Well, <laughs> let me say the question. Mm -hmm. Why do I often think things will get better or be better or that I'll actually have more if I do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, firstly, almost everything we said in our previous topic, which was uh, doing nothing because I think everything I will do will have a bad result. <laughs> yes, yeah. You can basically apply almost everything we said yep. there to this subject, yep. obviously. So basically it's an emotional condition. It's an emotional condition. Which we talked about and the reasons for in the previous yes. Know, examples. Yes, but uh, here we probably want to add some additional uh, you know, reasons why we right. may be in this state where yep. we believe that it, it's going to be better by yep. doing nothing. Yep. Whereas before we, so, we sort of were thinking, well, we were avoiding bad things yes. by doing nothing. Here we're saying, well, doing nothing is going to be better in some way. It's going Actually, to give you a better result. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and what, why do we feel that way? Yep. All right. So I'll read out some of the potential reasons we might have that belief yep. and let you chat about it. No worries. <laughs> All right. We've had parents who've been willing to do everything for us and we now selfishly believe that everyone else should do the same. Yeah, so we've alluded to this in the reasons why, you know, things uh, people believe in doing nothing, yeah. right, a couple of sessions ago. Yeah. But you can see that in this case, if we have somebody doing everything for us all the time, all of our life, all of our growing formative years, mm -hmm. We come to sort of feel that we can just sit around playing games, doing whatever yep. that we want. And, and all of our food and our clothes and our shelter and all our necessities of life should be provided by somebody else. Yes. And, uh, and so a lot of times we think also that that's how they show us they love us. Yeah. So, so in other words, I'm almost encouraged to do nothing so that the parent can feel that they love us. Mm. Right. And we almost feel like we're doing people a favour by doing nothing. <laughs> mm. Right. Yeah. Because that, that'll mean that, that they feel good about loving us and that we get all the results of their love. Right? Yeah. But, uh, so a small example of that, we've been talking with the um, volunteer selection group about, and I think we even mentioned this yesterday, about the emotions around housework and cleaning. Yes. And I was thinking about this and I have this very clear memory of my mother saying to me, you know, when I was a young girl, 
my mother said to me, one day you're going to have your own household to clean and look after and do the laundry for. And so until you reach that time, I'm going to do this for you. And and mum was saying, that's how my mum did it for me and that's how I'm going to do it for you. This is how I love you. <laughs> and so it almost built into this whole housework thing for me that um, proof, mum believed it was proof of her love that she did these things for me. Yeah. Um, so, I, and inherent in was that, in that her belief was that I accept that it was her love that she do this for me. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is it, not, it's an addiction. It's an addiction on her part. Yeah. It taught me nothing about the benefits of feeling what it feels like when you actually do look after yourself. And what it means to love yourself and be self-responsible and have self-worth and all those things. Because a person who loves themselves and self-responsible and have self-worth cares for themselves. Yes. Doesn't need somebody else to care for them. Yes. Yes. So, but this is really related to what you're saying here about when I feel like things are going to get better. It's almost like it was better for me to accept that from mum because she got to feel like I'm being a loving mother. And if I had have challenged her on that, would have challenged her addiction. And when in my family, when you challenge my parents' addiction, things definitely got well, worse. Well, things get emotionally violent then. Yes. Yeah. They did. Mm. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of guilt and shame and like punishment, yeah. emotional yeah. manipulation that all went on yeah. to get everyone back in the state of meeting everyone else's addictions. That's right. So, so yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, and that is a, a fairly common way of that most people believe that they're doing everyone else a favour by doing nothing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, let, and letting. Let like, them just think you what you hear think. it a lot with men, you know, who 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 their wives have made a, dedicated their lives to being the housewife. Yeah. And, and the men go, well, you know, every time I get up and do something, I just get criticised. Yes. It's far better to just let her do it because she yeah. loves doing it and that's how she feels like she's loving me and everything. Yeah. So I'm just going to let her do it. Yeah. And, and the problem is that in the person who's receiving it, 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 it encourages a lot of very poor behaviour. But does. it also doesn't address the addiction in the person who's doing it. Yes. Who's, who's taking these actions mm. to feed specific addictions of their own mm. that aren't love, mm. that are actually something else. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But that is a way how we can feel things are going to get better if we just mm. do nothing. That's right. All right. Next one. I wish to continue sinning or I want the res- I want to keep getting the results of sin. Mm-hmm. And if I took the loving action, there'd be no more opportunity for that sin. Yeah. So I feel like since getting the results of the sin or engaging in the sin is better, then I don't want to do stop or take any action in a loving direction. That's right. So this is about more about taking action in a loving direction. Yeah refusing to do so. Yeah. A lot of times it's because we do want to continue to receive the results of our sin. Mm. In other words, we want our addiction met or we want to, you know, get some feeling of approval, acceptance or whatever other thing that is going on for us for uh, to have our addiction met. And so we choose to not do the loving thing <laughs> because if yep. we did the loving thing, we would have to refuse the addiction being yes. met. And we want the addiction to be yeah. met. We want the sin. We want yeah. the results of it. Yeah. And and most people don't realise that the majority of the time they are sinning, they really want to. Yeah. They really want to yeah. receive the results of their sin. And in, I think in the previous example, you mentioned the husband who, you know, he, he's cheated on his wife, but he doesn't want to take the loving action to tell her because he keeps wanting to, he wants to be able to keep sleeping with his wife all the time. And she might not stop. She well, might it might not, not that. be that he wants to be able to keep sleeping with her. It could be quite, quite simple that he, he doesn't want to have to go through a divorce yeah. or he doesn't want to have to, you know, have her take the kids and he yes. likes the kids yeah. or he doesn't want to have to pay half of his money to yes. her. Yeah. You know, it could be just simple things like that yeah. even. It's not, yeah. he's not even thinking of her in most cases. It's just yeah. a selfish thing. Yeah. And, and uh, he just doesn't want, he wants to avoid the consequences of his actions. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm afraid of taking loving action since it may confront the previous unloving behaviour or desires in myself or others. Mm. This is a big one for most people who are avoiding action. So it frequently happens when somebody has been unloving to you Mm -hmm. and the loving action on your part would be to speak up about it and say something and do something about it. Now, most people under those circumstances avoid that Mm. because, because in avoiding it, 
they get to not confront that abusive person or that or that unloving behaviour, yeah. and therefore not receive further unloving behaviour such as violence or other other yeah. things. Yeah. And so a lot of people have this idea that you know they can they can lie and you know not tell the truth about what's really going on with regard to you know how they feel and all these things because it helps them avoid a future bad action mm. and but they don't understand that the compensatory laws are actually now kind of cor- going to correct their own choice now mm. to to not take any corrective mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so you know it's but it's another reason why a lot of people choose to do nothing and believe it's better and to believe do it's better yeah. to do nothing yeah mm. Okay, uh, could be that I'm afraid of being attacked. You just alluded to this: attacked, ridiculed, judged, controlled, or manipulated. Yes, for a lot of people, telling the truth, for example, is giving others the opportunity to attack you, judge you, criticise you, pull you down, and manipulate you and control you. Mm. And so they don't want to tell the truth mm-hmm. because it might result in any of those things. Now, of course, all of those things are can't, can't be done if you're pretty solid in terms of a connection with yourself and connection with what is right. Mm. You can't be controlled, manipulated. You can't be judged or or, or ridiculed because you won't feel any of that, right? And and sure, you can be physically attacked, Mm -hmm. but even if if you've learnt to forgive instantly, Mm. that even won't bother you, right? So so really, these are still things that you're personally avoiding, but you blame the other person for it. Yes. Or the situation for it. So you're trying to distance yourself from the fact that you are responsible for these feelings. Mm. Mm. And you're seeing you're seeing um, these things happening as a worse outcome. So you say, I won't do it, it's better if I don't, because that the A, B, C and D, that's a bad outcome. Yes. Instead of seeing, well, no, that's a personal choice on the behalf of others. Not and only I that, I also... I also see it as a better outcome. Yeah. So, you see, if, yes, you, I agree. If, if you're stating the truth to somebody and they start criticising you and ridiculing you, now you've found out their true character. Exactly. That is a better outcome it in is. my mind. Now you know that's a person I don't think I want to continue a relationship <laughs> yeah. with. You know? That's a person who's got high demands of me to suppress things. And when I don't, that's how they behave. Well, gee, I'm glad I know that now. And that person <laughs> really is abusive. Yeah. yeah. And, and and do I want to keep associating yeah. with an yeah. abusive person? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. So so what happens is by telling the truth, for example, in this example, you, you actually end up confronting the real condition of a person mm-hmm. and seeing it for yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, that is a very good thing in my mind. Mm. But for the majority of people on this planet, it's not. Yes. Most people on this planet think, no, that's a bad thing. You've got to avoid that. So what you would do is you avoid taking action and that will help you avoid all that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, another thing could be I'm terrified of the positive results of loving action. Yes. Now, this is an interesting one. And, and you do notice this nowadays, like people are afraid of falling in love. There's only positive results, mm. you, you know, but they're afraid of it because in the past, they fell, fell in love with somebody and then that person must have rejected them or yeah. something like that must have yeah. happened. Yeah. And so now they sort of say, well, no, I don't want to fall in love now. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's a, it's a good thing, but they don't want to do it. Yeah. And so they avoid taking action. Yeah. You know, it's, it, you see this a lot in uh, relationships that just start to develop mm-hmm. and then uh, families get involved in the relationship, you know, where family puts pressure on one party, say, no, you shouldn't have a relationship with this person or we're going to punish you for having a relationship with this person through abusive, you know, usually it's, it can be emotional violence, but it can also in many countries revert to physical violence and even death. Mm. And so a lot of people become afraid of who they get involved with and who, who, you know, who they love and who who they're allowed to love and all those kind of things. So they're afraid of doing something good because Mm. they're afraid of how some, someone else will respond to them doing that that yeah. thing now in my mind i would still go ahead and do it and even if the person killed me i would think well now i know what their character is and their nature mm. is and that and that's not my problem yeah. that's theirs yeah uh, is is the way i feel yeah and uh, and i also know that's the way god feels too you know yeah. whenever anybody takes a an, an unloving action towards you that person has a problem mm. and uh, it doesn't matter what you've done mm. and particularly if all you've done is try to love somebody 
um, it, you know, that means that the other person who's trying to stop you is ha has a pretty big problem. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. Um, I believe that loving action will result in more personal hardship. We've really just spoken about that as well. Yeah. The, and the positive results, I, I suppose going back to your previous one, I'm terrified of the positive results of loving action. You know, sometimes a positive result of falling in love is that we just open up to ourselves emotionally. We feel things more intensely. Old hurts come up to be grieved. We also just just feel ourselves, and some of us are just terrified of that, aren't we? That's right. So, yeah. so we're basically saying that the loving action will result in more personal hardship, and yeah. usually the personal hardship takes the form of an emotion that you've got to feel. Yeah, yeah. And in other words, you're really saying, if I take some loving action, I'm going to have to feel some bad emotions, mm. and I don't want to have to do that. Mm. Whereas it's almost like the previous one, that's actually a positive result. To feel those emotions is, is a positive, positive thing, result, but, but we're afraid of it. We don't want to do it. Yeah. We don't want to feel the emotions, yeah. so we think it's a negative one. And that's really our final one, that I'm not humble to experiencing every emotion. Yes, and this humility to emotion is, you know, the, the very definition of humility is to feel every emotion, mm -hmm. whether you think it's going to be good or bad. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, most people still do not get that at all, right? <laughs> and, and, and most people we've even talked to for years and years still do not get that at all. Yeah. They, they believe that emotions are there to be avoided, you know, yeah. at, at all costs generally. And, and this is a major problem that causes inaction. Um, if you're willing to pay the penalty of avoiding emotion, then, then the penalty of avoiding emotion usually is inaction. Mm. And, and, and in other words, we refusing to take action helps you avoid emotion. I see. Yeah. And, and this is what my, why most people do it, yeah. is because they feel that it helps them avoid emotion. In other words, what they feel, their fear of emotion is so great mm. They don't have any confidence or faith mm -hmm. that they can work their way through emotion. Mm -hmm. And their fear of emotion is so great, they are willing to be inactive for long periods of their life mm. and not actually accomplish anything mm. in order to avoid emotion, mm. which is very sad. Yeah, so our question here was, why might I think it's better to do nothing mm. and things will turn out better to do nothing. And really there you're saying, well, most of us believe that things turn out better when we get to avoid emotion. That's right. And that's the core, that's how that whole belief system gets established. That's right. Don't want to feel emotions. So feeling, avoiding emotion is better. When I do things, I feel things. So it's better to not, to not do, do things. things. Yeah. 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 And this is why in our very first assistance groups, we raised yes. four issues with people. Mm -hmm. The very first one was love. The second one was truth. The third one was. Well, I want to call it faith, but there's action. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was, there, was, there was humility amongst all that, wasn't there? Well, hey, you humble, no, humble emotions. Emotion is the force, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the emotion. So that was the fourth one. Love, truth. I thought there was faith, action, emotion. Is that right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Faith, action, emotion. Yeah. So, so, so like action yeah, a was a very part. important part of yeah. feeling emotion. Yes. And, and so right, every time we say, I don't want to take action, all we're really saying is, I don't want to feel emotions. Yeah. yeah. Because all of them are sort of supportive of each other. They they yeah. assist the others to exist, really, don't That's they? That's right, yeah. When we have them. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. <laughs> all right. All right. So we just need to remind everyone again that what we've just mentioned, that's not the sum total of why we might think it's better to avoid action, rather. No. But it, it just gives us a, an idea, some ideas as to why we might have that belief inside of us. Yes. Um, obviously, there's going to be some co uh, corrective compensation going on when we have that belief. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot because yeah. uh, because to avoid action, as we've pointed out, in the soul is impossible. Yeah. And so the fact that you're trying to is yeah. going to require the suppression yeah. of thoughts, feelings, beliefs that are all there already. Yeah. And you're resisting them. You're, you're yeah. trying to avoid them. And that's going to cause a lot of internal physical uh, illness and sickness, as well as a lot of internal emotional ha yeah. hardship as well yeah. uh, for you. Yes. And this is where you do you do see a lot of people in this state, uh, does, da, da, they are generally very afraid or angry people yeah. uh, because, it, because they can't, they don't feel they can handle anything really. Yeah. And yeah. they don't have any confidence in the way God has created, created them. them. 
And all of those beliefs and those patterns and that state we get into has its origins in painful childhood experience. And so in order to change it, we're going to have to experience yeah. some of that childhood pain. Yeah. Then we can, then our beliefs will naturally change. And by the way here, we're still saying that childhood pain could be that everyone did everything for us. Exactly. That, that can cause quite a large degree of superiority type of emotions inside of us, mm -hmm. which are a major cause of us trying to do nothing. Well, and cause us a lot of pain in adulthood. Then. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right.